Hello and welcome. We'll be taking another look at QLab and AppleScript today. In my previous videos, I've assumed a basic understanding of AppleScript, and in this video, I'd like to take a little bit of a deeper dive into what's actually going on underneath the hood and how to actually construct some of this. Uh, so let's jump into QLab, and we'll take a look at um, the piece of code we'll be examining. Um, this is probably my most reused piece of code, unsurprisingly contributed by Rich Walsh. Uh, so we'll run this real quick, and we'll then we'll talk about it. So uh, this is called enter some text, and if we run it, uh, I just wrote a little script to demonstrate it. Um, we run it, we see we get this little title in our pop-up. We get uh, this please enter some text, which is a string that I've defined, and then we get a default answer. Uh, we can enter whatever we want in here. This is some text, and we hit enter, and then it stores it in a variable. Uh, normally, then we use that variable off in the script, but in this instance for this demo, I've just uh, displayed the contents of that variable back to the screen. So uh, we hit OK, and it goes away. That's how the script works. Let's look at the code and see what's actually happening. Um, so those of you who've seen the Projector Manager video, you've already seen this. Uh, this is called Enter Some Text. Um, and I use this pretty much whenever I need to get text input from the user. Uh, it is bulletproof. I've never had a problem with it. So rather than reinventing the wheel, I, I just keep reusing it. Um, there is a Pablo Picasso, or at least a quote that is often attributed to Pablo Picasso that says, good artists borrow, great artists steal. You can decide for yourself how true that is for artists, but that is definitely true for coders in my experience. Um, so uh, with that little introduction out of the way, let's look at the actual code, what's going on. So up here at the top of the code, we see this global dialogue title. Uh, this is how you declare a global variable in Apple Script. A global variable is just a variable that can be used anywhere in the script, um, and that is in contrast to a local variable, which is what you're normally defining with the set variable name uh, syntax, like we see right down here. This is a local variable. Um, if we tried to use some text down in this enter some text, uh, sorry, if we tried to use the variable some text down in the function enter some text block. That would not work. It would be out of the scope for this local variable. However, this global variable, because it works everywhere, we could put it anywhere we want. So we could, if we wanted, we could say display, oops, excuse me, uh, display dialog, uh, dialog, oops, excuse, wrong button, dialog title. So if we do this, um, and then we'll just go ahead and run this for, for um, I'm going to actually comment that out, comment that out, um, and this will just uh, pop up that one title if we run this real quick. It just says subroutine demo, that was, that was what we had defined our global dialog title as. Um, so like I said, that, that will work anywhere. We see it works here in the regular QLab block and works down here in the enter some text block because it is a global. Globals work everywhere. Um, so we will undo those two changes real quick. And now we're back at it. So uh, we have a global dialog title, which we set to subroutine demo. Um, we could name this variable whatever we want. We could name this beginning text. We could name this window pop-up. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, dialogue title is what was uh, what I inherited, and that's what I continue to use. Um, subroutine demo is the string that gets printed on the screen, so you're going to want to redefine that for whatever is applicable, whatever is appropriate for your current use case. Uh, then we come into the main block. Of the, this would be like the main function in another programming language, um, and it starts with the tell application QLab. For, which we normally have uh, in this long verbose mode so that we prevent breaking changes uh, to tell the front workspace so that lets you know that it's the active window the front active window topmost limit window um, to do some stuff sorry I thought the cat was one trying to get out um, so uh, this next line says set some text to so set some text to that's how you define a variable um, again, like I said earlier, this is the local variable sum text, and we're going to define it to the return of this function, enter sum text. 
Uh, in AppleScript, you call your user-defined functions with the keyword my. So uh, we'll run this my enter some text function, uh, which is called a subroutine down here. Uh, those, in this instance, those words are interchangeable. Um, so we'll run this. It'll pop up. Please enter some text with the default text. And right now it is set to uh, empty allowed is true. Interesting. I forgot to fix that from my testing earlier. Let's change that to false. Um, so uh, what's going on here with this enter some text in these three things? Well, we go down to the function definition, and that's where we see what actually what's actually going on. So um, you define functions with on. You call them with my, you invoke them with my, you define them with on. So on enter some text will have these three arguments. The three arguments are the prompt, which is the, the question we're asking the user. It's the default answer, which is what we'll pre-populate the form with. And then empty allowed, which is whether or not we are forcing the user to return something. So if we say empty allowed false, that means they have to return something. If you say empty allowed true, then that means we will accept a blank line. Uh, I almost never use empty allowed true. In fact, I can't think of outside of doing it in this demo earlier. I can't think of ever doing that. Um, so then uh, we've got a, a tell QLab block down here again because this this function is a different scope from this. Uh, if it was if it was inside uh, in between these two lines, this tell and this intel, we wouldn't need to do it again. But since it's out after this intel, we need to tell AppleScript once again that we're using QLab. Um, we're going to set a variable to the nicknamed the answer to an empty string. And then we're going to start a loop that while that variable, the answer, is set to an empty string, we're going to keep asking um, we're going to keep asking the user to input a string. So uh, this actually says repeat until the answer is not. That that is AppleScript link syntax. Uh, in other languages, this would be a, a while loop. Um, so then we get into the loop, and, and we'll repeat this until the condition is met, until the answer has some value. Uh, we, will try, we will attempt to set the answer to the text return of a display dialog. So display dialog is the simple version of, of, of interacting with the user. Um, this whole function makes that more robust. Uh, so we'll display dialog this question that we've defined um, above with the title and the default answer. We've already talked out about all of this. Um, and then, oh, I should say, um, so with title is a built-in function of, of um, AppleScript. Uh, it's not showing up because I'm not in the editor, but if I was in the editor, this would be all syntax highlighted. Dialog title is, is my, my variable. Default answer is another built-in function, as is default buttons. Default button and cancel button are all uh, built-in functions, and I absolutely recommend that you define buttons so that your users can uh, confirm or cancel their input. Um, so again, this will this will repeat all of those steps, displaying the question with all of these this formatting uh, until we have emptied a string. Unless emptied allowed is true, if emptied allowed is true, then it'll exit regardless of what you enter. Um, and then we have this end repeat that that's how we know these are the things to continue repeating until this condition is satisfied. Uh, once the answer has a value, we will return the we will return the answer, and then we're done. So that's how this all this works. That's all that's going on. Clear as mud, right? Um, now that we've discussed how it works, let's let's go ahead and change some things. Let's go ahead and modify this slightly and and give it some new functionality to see how how writing these works. Um, so I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to take it into a new file like I normally do. We're going to paste it, um, and we're going to save this. Uh, so our, our original function here is called enter some text. Uh, we're going to do a more specific one. We're going to say enter some number. I'm going to call this video because uh, I've already done a sample version of this, and I don't want to overwrite it just in case uh, I need to check my notes for any reason. Um, so what we want to do here is we just want to adjust this line here 
so that it will only accept a numeric value. Right now we can enter any text, uh, we can enter symbols, um, we can enter whatever we want pretty much and it'll work. We want to change it so that it will only take a numeric value. Um, that's actually a pretty easy change to start. All we gotta do is go to this end of the set the answer line and say as number. So you may have noticed uh, in some other scripts I've used uh, the, the line selected as list. Um, and what that does is it takes the selected cues and coerces them into a list. What it does when we say as a number is it will take whatever text we returned um, in our form and it will try and coerce it into a number, into a numeric value. And if it can't, then it'll error for us. And because it's going to throw an error, that means we want to add a try block because we don't want to actually break things when it errors, we want to deal with that error. So we're going to add a line before this, and we're going to say try, and then uh, as, with, as with most blocks in AppleScript, anytime you have an opening, you need an end at the closing, so we'll do an end try. So we're going to try and set this to a number. Uh, if it's not a number, if we get an error, we're going to do this. We're going to say on error. So the first thing we want to look for is if empty allowed is true. Because if empty allowed is true and we don't return a number, then we're going to assume that the user doesn't really care about that value and we're going to let them try again. So we're just going to fail silently. So uh, if empty, uh, empty allowed is, we're just copying this line from two lines above, is true, then exit repeat, then fail silently. Um, the, the user will see that they, they didn't get their change that they were looking for and re-execute and try again. Um, again, I, I have never used empty allowed as true. We always use false, which um, in that case, if empty is allowed false, we'll proceed to this line, display dialog, dialog, that was not a valid number, uh, sorry. Please try again. Um, so we'll, we'll do that, and I'm going to go ahead and just indent all of this. One of the benefits of using the script editor over uh, VS Code, like I am currently doing, is that anytime, uh, anytime you compile your script, it will automatically format it, and then you don't have to mess around with it the way I am like this. Uh, that's pretty nice. Um, unfortunately, before you compile it, you won't get the syntax highlighting. So there's always trade-offs. Um, because I like the instant syntax highlighting and I like the dark mode, I use VS Code a lot, um, but that's just a personal preference. Going back to the code, um, this should now be set. I think we're ready to give this a try. So we're going to go ahead and save this. Let's compile it. It compiles without errors. Let's try and run this. We'll switch back over to QLab. It says, please enter some text. You know what? Let's go ahead and change this. Let's, uh, let's, let's cancel out of that. Um, but we saw that the, the cancel message works, so that's nice. Um, let's change this, uh, change this example text to, uh, we're just going to change this to the number one. Uh, and then uh, we will please enter, we'll, uh, we'll change this as well to, Please enter a, a number. Okay, uh, now I think we're ready to try this out. Okay, so we run it, we take it over, to, we go over to QLab, it says please enter a number. Uh, we hit one, it displays number one because remember um, outside of that function in the main block of the script I had that extra line just to check things. So that looks like it's working. Uh, let's go back over here, we'll copy it all. Um, and then we'll bring it into QLab and throw it into a script. We will paste it all in. We will assign it a hotkey of Control A for testing. Uh, and then we'll run that once. It says, please enter some numbers. Uh, just to test, we'll, we'll try entering no number. Uh, and that says, OK. Well, that's not good. Oh, you know what? Let me check. I bet. I bet. Huh. Okay, that that did not go the way I expected it to go. Uh, 
I was sure the active repeat. Let me try this one more time from the script editor. I just want to. Why is that interesting? So what that doing is that's con that's coercing an empty 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 string to zero. Uh, I've I've not had that happen before in my testing, so that's why I'm I'm thrown here. Um, no, previously when I've tried this uh, in empty, well here let's just show you uh, if we this is some um, text. So if we if we enter something that is explicitly not a number, then it will work. And if we get if we hit OK, then it gives us this again. And if we enter an actual number, then it displays our number. So uh, this is interesting, though. So I'm going to dig into this real quick and see if I can figure this out. Um, OK, let's try this one more time. Um, let's try. Okay, uh, I, I'm not really sure what's going on there uh, because when I when I actually force an empty string, it's saying that's uh, uh, well, I'm not forcing an empty string. I guess I'm forcing quotations. Weird. That's so weird. Let me let me try this one. This was uh, one that I worked on earlier. Um, okay, so I, I'm not sure what's going on. When I tested this earlier, this all functioned the way I anticipated. I'm going to go back into my, my test file and see what I did differently. I will be back shortly uh, with an explanation. Sorry about that. All right, well, we're back again, and it appears that my, my testing before the video was just not pr robust enough. So we're going to change our methodology a little bit here. I was able to get the script updated uh, without too much effort, too much reworking. Um, so uh, let's jump over into the code. So uh, the first thing I did was I moved this as number. Uh, I did I took it off. It's not up here on the end anymore. Uh, we're now going to be doing this. We're going to move our try block. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to check and see if we get an answer. If we get an answer, then we're going to try and set the answer to the answer as a number. Uh, if, if that doesn't work, then we'll display our dialog that says try again, and we'll reset the answer to a null string. Um, this way, uh, when, the way we had it with the set answer as number, when it was erroring, it was, it was never clearing that string. So it was, uh, it was meeting this, this repeat condition. So now we've made sure that if it's not a number, we're not going to have anything stored into the answer when we get down to this end repeat and loop back around. Um, so now that we've got this all updated and more robust, um, this this is all essentially the same stuff. We've just ordered it a little bit differently and, and added this extra if if block that's to, that tests what the answer is when it first comes back from the user. Um, so now let's take a look at this in, in QLab. We'll run it. Um, we got it in QLab. Let me bring this over here. Um, and we see we've got example text. Uh, if we hit back, um, and we see it pops right back up because uh, it doesn't like no, no string. So then if we try with a uh, text instead of a number, we'll say that was not a number. Try again. Uh, and so then finally, we'll give it an actual number, and it will tell us the number is 1. So there you have it. Uh, oh, and just for thoroughness, let's let's put uh, paste it all in here. Mirror that. Oh, I didn't have that copied still. Sorry. Let's grab this. We'll grab all of this code. Take it back to QLab. Hit cancel. Paste in that. Uh, run Control A. See example text, we try a null string. So uh, we try example text, and it says that was not a number. And then we'll give it an actual number, and there we go. So now, once again, we have a function that will, that is based off our enter some text function that we got uh, from, that someone contributed online to us. This will now uh, only accept a number, and it does that by 
first checking that the, the answer is not a null string and then trying to convert the no answer to a number. If that passes, it returns. If that doesn't pass, then it, it clears the variable and loops back up to ask the user one more time. Um, so we can take this function and we can copy this into any of our scripts anytime we need to prompt the user for uh, a numeric entry. Um, and this will be uh, slightly better than asking for just a general text entry because it will guarantee that we only get the right type of input. So, um, so I think that's all for this video. Uh, we, we tried to look a little bit more into how the Apple scripts actually function instead of just telling you what to write to make it do different things. So I uh, hope we accomplished that. If we didn't, please let me know in the comments and, and we'll do this again. Uh, as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll find the scripts and the shell file available on my GitHub shortly, and we'll see you next time.